joining BYU Sports Nation once again, the man who composed the following tweet on Tuesday night while watching the BYU Ole Miss basketball play-in game. Quote, hi, I'm Rob Lowe, and I'm BYU in the second half, Rob Lowe. <laughs> ESPN college football insider Brett McMurphy, who moonlights as a Twitter comedian, apparently. Brett, nice to have you with us again. Yeah, I, I won't quit my day job. Don't worry about that. <laughs> Listen, the SEC validation comes yesterday, and BYU football fans jump all over it for good reason because they were excluded at first, and now they're included again. Why do you feel like the SEC had to bring the, that validation back and do it now? Well, I think they just basically they looked at the, the landscape of college football, similar to what the ACC did when they changed their stance, and I reported that a couple of months ago. You look at the other Power Five conferences, the Big Ten, the Pac-12, and the Big 12, they're all playing nine conference games or headed to nine conference games, and the SEC only plays eight conference games. The ACC has eight conference games, but then five teams play Notre Dame every year, so they basically have eight and a half. So the SEC, in its quest of trying to find quality opposition on the non-conference schedule, is finding fewer and fewer opportunities out there. So I think they kind of took a step back and said, Let, let's look at this, let's evaluate it. And, you know, they changed, they tweaked it a little bit different than the ACC. The SEC made it include all FBS independents, obviously BYU. Notre Dame was already included, but they did include Army, which the immediate reaction on Twitter was SEC schools are now all lined up to play Army. But actually, SEC schools don't have any future games lined up with the Army. But I mean, it's certainly it's it's the best situation for BYU, other than getting in a Power Five conference. Uh, th- this is the best best deal for them. And you know, credit to Tom Holmo to keep keep uh, banging at it to to knock out these um, home and homes because it's not easy. And he's got you know he's got five games coming up. With SEC opponents, Mississippi State, he's got two. You guys got Missouri, a two-game series, and you got LSU uh, in Houston in a couple of years, and and that's huge. Brett, as the guy who broke the news, why now from the SEC? Why March nineteenth? I don't think it was specifically set for that day. I, I, I found out about it yesterday, and I reported it. Uh, I actually think it was decided um, a week or so ago. Uh, a source had told me the, at the SEC tournament um, when the ADs got together and they, you know, did conference business. That was one of the topics that came up, and so I believe it, it, actually it was it was passed maybe a week or so ago. I just found out about it yesterday, and so that's that's why I reported it. It wasn't any specific. Oh, we want to do it on the first day of the NCAA tournament or anything like that. And, you know, just for, for BYU fans, I was just trying to take their mind off of the Ole Miss game, so I was trying to help out where I could. <laughs> well, we appreciate a, that. That was a welcome respite <laughs> for sure. It was last summer, so it hasn't even – it's been, what, nine or ten months since the SEC uh, and ACC said what they said about BYU. And now here, less than a year later, they have uh, changed their mind. What happened in the last year? I don't know. I think basically, it, you know, it goes back to they started – you know, they've – they looked at the college football playoff, and you know it, we've had a year now to kind of digest or get get a read on how they're going to evaluate teams and what they what they value. Um, and so I think you know they looked at that and and they realized you know the SEC is going to continue to play an FCS opponent. They're going to have the tomato can, uh, you know that that week in uh, in November before they play the you know the Iron Bowl or the Egg Bowl and those sort of games that, that that's likely never going to go away but in the other three games they're required by league rules to to play one you know non non conference power 5 team so they lo- I think they looked at the landscape and they just said you know there aren't you know a lot from the other power 5 leagues that are available um, you know, certainly the success BYU's had, you guys know off the top of your head, consecutive bowl games that BYU's been to, et cetera, et cetera. So I think it, it just made sense to them to kind of, you know, create a bigger pool of teams to choose from. Um, you know, it was interesting that they included Army. I, I haven't really got a specific reason on why they did that. Um, you know, because technically, you know, what, what happens if um, – 
you know, middle Tennessee state goes independent. Yeah. All of a sudden, do they, do they count? You know, I don't have any idea. Um, but certainly Notre Dame has never been an issue for, for the SEC, ACC, or any of these other conferences. But, um, you know, it's great for BYU. And I, I've talked to you guys about this before. I thought the biggest challenge for you guys as an independent would be scheduling quality games from September to the, the last week of November, first week of December, and certainly with the ACC and SEC being on board um, with playing BYU, that it will count towards their allotment of, of uh, non-conference Power 5 games. That's, that's huge going forward. ESPN's Brett McMurphy, college football insider, the man who broke the news about the SEC, including BYU, Army, and Notre Dame as part of the SEC's requirement of playing one non-conference Power 5 team per season is on BYU Sports Nation. When you look at what BYU has done, and Tom Homo specifically over the past four months, Brett, scheduling five different games with the SEC and that a home-and-home home with uh, – or a neutral home with Missouri and now a home-and-home home with Mississippi State and a one-off with LSU at a neutral stadium. How much of this announcement on the SEC's part do you feel like had to do with BYU having those five games scheduled? Well, I think – I think, I think you know, the reason why they decided to do it, um, and maybe they, they decided to, you know, uh, discuss it at the uh, SEC basketball tournament, was, um, you know, as I, I guess BYU and Mississippi State confirmed what I reported yesterday about the, the home and home with Mississippi State and BYU in, in 16 and 17. Um, I don't know how long, I just found out about it yesterday, so I don't know how long that series had been scheduled or they had been working on it. But I'm guessing that basically they didn't want to announce uh, the series until they had finalized whether BYU would count mm. as a as the non-conference Power Five. So I think it was, um, you know, kind of like let's get it out, let's let's make the decision at the conference meetings whether BYU and the other independents will count or not, and then once that happened. Uh, you know, the Mississippi State series. Uh, I'm guessing this is total speculation. I'm guessing, obviously, Mississippi State probably talked with uh, other ADs and conference officials to try to get a read on if they thought um, that the league would change their stance on BYU. Because if you guys remember in January when I broke the ACC news, I reached out to the SEC and they said, no, we have not changed our stance on BYU. So certainly Mississippi State, I'm sure, did their homework or uh, check check behind the scenes to find out if if there was a change uh, in in philosophy with the SEC before going forward with that schedule. And so I think you know once they did officially decide yes we're going to do it, then you know they went ahead and and decided to get news out about about this upcoming series. Brad, the big question in my mind is, and we've been discussing on the show today is. What does this actually mean for BYU? The SEC validating BYU as a P5 equivalent game uh, for non-conference games in the SEC. What does it actually mean for the Cougars? Well, it means it'll be easier to to find teams to play, um, you know, to fill out that schedule from from September to November. You know, a BYU fan on Twitter, you know, uh, sent me a tweet and said, you know, now we're now we're considered a Power Five team. And I said, <laughs> no. well, te- technically, you, I guess, you are, except you get, you know, several million dollars less money in payouts from the college football playoff. So <clears throat> basically, you you've got everything that a Power Five team has, except for the money. And I think a lot of people would say that's that's the biggest caveat of, of being in a power five team is these monster uh tv deals uh from espn and other networks uh where you, you know you got conferences like the big 12 making over 20 million dollars per team um you know i know byu has a tv deal with espn i i guarantee they're not making 20 million a year <laughs> on that deal um but it's as far as byu's position is except for getting the millions of dollars that go along with being in a major conference uh, that's distributed also through the college football playoff, this is about as good as it can get for them. Um, you know, the next step is, you know, try, I know, try to get in a power five conference. Yeah, you know, I continue uh, to hear that the, the big 12 doesn't want to go West. They want to go East. Don't, don't shoot the messenger. Um, I know people will think just because the ACC and the SEC will now consider them a Power 5 team, 
maybe that changes the perception of BYU for teams looking to add teams. I still don't believe we're going to see any conference um, expansion or realignment unless Jim Delaney presses the red blinking button and goes to 16 teams and blows everything up and everybody reacts to build up their conferences. Then BYU will land somewhere where I don't know. But if, if that doesn't happen, I think it's going to be a couple of years before the Big 12 decides what they want to do. Um, what I'm being told is, you know, they don't want to expand. Um, and they've got to decide if they want to have a conference championship game. And obviously they've got to get the waiver from the NCAA to do that. They could do that with 10 teams. But, again, whatever two teams the Big 12 would add, they would be from non-Power 5 leagues. And that reduces that $20 million a year to, you know, $18 million a year, $17 million a year per team. So it's hard to convince those guys to add two more teams just to play – just so we can have two divisions and play a championship game. They like they like playing a round robin. Uh, they may work on that one true champion uh, motto. Um, but it's, back to your original question, this, this is huge for BYU going forward, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, you know, it's they're still they still got a ways to go um, to to get up into that that Power Five group, and that, that's unfortunate. But they're doing as good as they can um, with with the fi- without the financial benefits that these power conference leagues have. Brett McMurphy, ESPN College Football Reporter on BYU Sports Nation. Follow him at McMurphy ESPN. Brett, we'll end with this. And you already you, we were going to ask you if BYU is any closer to a P5 invitation, but you already answered that. So uh, thank you for taking that moral obligation out of our hands and, and just running with it. Uh, but if you had to guess in the near future, if the Big Ten is going to go to 16 teams, what kind of a timetable would you put on that? Uh, I, I think it wouldn't be for like 10 years because um, we've got all these – we've got, you know, the Big 12 – has their grant of rights deals, the, the ACC has grant of rights, and that basically means if you leave that conference and go to another conference, your TV money remains with the conference. So nobody's going to take a team from another Power Five league if their TV revenue stays back in their old conference. But those deals expire in about 11 or 12 years. Um, and so I think once we get towards the end of those deals, I think it's a possibility. I'm not saying it's guaranteed, but I think there's more likely a possibility that we may see one more shift. Now, obviously everything going on with, um, you know, pay per play, uh, you know, cost of attendance, all these things, all these lawsuits that are going on at Dennis Dodd of CBS sports wrote a fascinating piece talking to Jack Swarbrick, where he thinks basically we're going to, the NCAA will be divided in two where schools will be able to pay players uh, or supplement them more than a scholarship, and then other schools can decide that they don't want to do it. He thinks that's one one way we may go down the road. So the conferences may totally be um, – may not even look like they do now at this point. But I, I would think as far as the, the Big Ten going to 16, I would say – I don't think it's likely, but I think if it does happen, it's probably not for probably about 10 years. Brett, we appreciate the time, and we look forward to your next one-line zinger on Twitter as well. Keep keep them coming. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> Brett, thanks. Thanks, guys.